Hey guys, we're learning a new function today. Uh, so what are some functions we've worked with before? We have linear functions we've worked with before. Remember, draw us a line. We've worked with absolute value functions, our fee function. And today what we're getting into is exponential functions. And if you notice, it looks like a curve. I usually like to call it a boomerang. And then I just wanted to show you what we're getting into next is a parabola so that's quadratic functions so we've seen linear if you're looking there it's linear absolute value exponential and now quadratic functions all right so let's talk about exponential functions so we're looking at the graph f of x equals 2 to the x power, and we're wondering, what is that going to look like? Well, this is what tells you have exponential. Look where your x is. x is your exponent. It's an exponential function. If it were just 2x, like 2 times x, that would be linear. It wouldn't be the exponent. Super important. So now when we go to plug it in, right, we solve for x. If we're plugging in negative 2 for x, I'm going to use my paper here. So say we have f of x equals 2 to the x power, and I'm plugging in a negative 2 for x. See that? I'm plugging in a negative 2 for x. Well, remember, negative exponents, i got to deal with that. I've got to move it to the denominator. So that's 1 over 2 to the second power. And then 1 over 2 to the second power, what's that? Oh, it's 1 fourth. So when I plug in... Get that? Trying to move it. When I plug in negative 2 for x, oh, there it is, I get 1 fourth. So fill that in in your table. Pause the video, fill in the rest, plot those points, and I'll show you what you get. All right, so you already paused. Now I've got negative 2 for my x value. You get 1 half. When x is 0, 2 to the 0, we got to remember that rule that is 1. When 2 is 1, 2 to the first power is 2. When 2 is 2, 2 to the second power is 4. So these are the five input and output values that you should have gotten. So we have 1 fourth, 1 half, 1, 2, and 4. What's happening as we go from 1 to the next? Hmm, something to think about. Plot those points. And your graph should look like this. If you notice, negative 2, we're going up a fourth away. I'm looking at that point. For negative 1, I'm going up half the way. For 0, 1, that's easy. Integers. 1, 2, that's easy. 2, 4, that's easy. Hey, 3, 8, that's also there, but not that we had it. That's okay. So this is an example of that boomerang, of that exponential function, and it's growing. So we call this exponential growth. All right? Let's talk about some of the characteristics that we just noticed. Well, the domain. Let's go back. The domain. What x values am I allowed to plug in? All of them. So it's all real numbers. The graph goes on forever, so it's continuous. Right? So these are some of the characteristics that I want to talk about. So the domain is all real numbers. The graph is continuous. The range, hmm. Going back, the range, my y values are all actually above zero and not including it. That's a fun fact, and there's something having to do with that. The function gets closer and closer. I'm reading, if you can read along with me. Gets closer and closer to the x-axis, but never quite reaches it. Never. And we call that line that it never reaches an asymptote. You'll see that more in Algebra 2, but it's good to know. The asymptote for this graph that we looked at back here is that x-axis, and that line, Hoivox, horizontal line, is y equals 0. So the range, we talked about the domain is all real numbers, but your range has got to be y is greater than 0. All right, awesome. So here's like our concept summary on exponential functions. Exponential function is the product product of the initial amount in a constant ratio raised to a power. So if you notice, A is your initial amount, like your y-intercept with slope-intercept form. We had a y-intercept and a slope. Now we've got an initial amount and the constant ratio. 
The difference is, is you're not adding every time. You're multiplying by two. That's why I got larger and larger exponentially. And B can never be anything less than zero or zero. And it can't even be one because one to every single power gives you one. So get that information down, hit pause, and we'll continue. All right, so we're looking at this table, and we're going to turn it into an equation that looks like this, f of x equals a times b to the x power, right? So I'm looking here. I'm going to use my pen, and as you saw in the last slide, I'm not too handy with it. What's happening from the 4 to the 12, the 12 to the 36, the 36 to the 8, the 108, well, I'm sorry, 108, the 108 to the 324? I'm sure you figured it out by now. It's times 3. So that means my B value is 3. That's that constant ratio. Look here. B is the constant ratio. What's happening? So it's my B is 3. And the other part is the initial value, which we call the y-intercept. So you're looking at what's my y-intercept and you don't have it. You might have to figure it out by plugging in an x and a y, plugging in a point, but you don't. You have it. When it, x is 0, that's your y-intercept. So your initial value is 4. So your equation, let's pick a different color. Your equation is y or f of x, whatever, 4 times the product of 3 to the x power. All right, I'm going to show you some transitions that's just going to help this, but that's your answer. So they're saying, okay, what's happening? We're dividing, dividing, and we get 3 times 3 is the same thing what we talked about. Our initial amount is 4, constant ratio is 3, and then they gave you the function f of x equals 4 times 3 to the x power. Notice the b is in parentheses. A lot of times we put that, especially if it's fraction or, uh, you know, can be negative, but or if it's a decimal. All right, see my idea here. We need to look at a graph and write an equation for it. Pause the video, try this one on your own, and hit play. All right, so a lot of people actually prefer to just put these into a table, and then they can see what's happening. So what's happening from 128 to 64, from 64 to 32, from 32 to 16, 16 to 8, 8 to 4? Well, you, if you want to say divided by 2, if that's what you want to say, divided by 2, those are terrible. Whatever. So divided by 2, this it has to be times. So instead of divided by 2, I've got to multiply by 1 half. So that means my B is 1 half. And then all I need is my A. What's my Y-intercept? My Y-intercept is over here when X is 0. Y is 128. So my A is 128. So again, I need parentheses. So I have Y equals or F of X, whatever, same thing. 128, wow, times 1 half. That's just fantastic. Look at that penmanship. Beautiful. All right, and that's all. That's our answer, Murder, She Wrote. Last one to do, I need you to pause and hit last three to do. Um, Find the equation for each of these, hit pause, and then uh, we'll go over it. All right, so you hit pause, we're going over it. Um, so the equation, whoa, the equation is, pen, thank you, y equals, my initial value is 3, and what's happening for 1 to the next, I multiply by 4, so it's 4 to the x power. For this one, my initial value is 2,000. 187. And what's happening as I go across, I've got to divide. If I'm thinking divide, it's really multiply by 1 over 3, whatever that number is, to the x power. All right, sweet. Last slide I seriously promise. Determine which functions are exponential. Look through each of these. Determine, hit pause right now, hit play when you're done. All right, so number one is actually that quadratic function that we talked about before from that they change from one to the next, and it's not the same constant rate. For B, every time you're multiplying by three, that's exponential. For C, you're multiplying by one half each time, that's exponential. For D, you're subtracting 0.5 each time, that's linear. And that's all.
All right, hope you had some fun with exponential functions. Have the best day ever.